What's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna go over the Polar Vantage M. All right guys, so Polar did send me over this watch for review, but we didn't have any prior agreement with us to do a positive and negative review. This is my own thoughts on this product. So let's go ahead and talk about it. This is the Polar watch. This is the Vantage series. So it's a little bit old. So in this video, I'm not gonna go over all the details on it, but what I will do is go over a little overview of it. And then I'll tell you all my likes and dislikes of it. And finally, I'll tell you if it's a watch worth buying by telling you if it's a Goku Runner's thumbs up, Goku Runner's kinda, or a Goku Runner's thumbs down. Okay, so this is the Polar Vantage M. Like I said earlier, uh, this is a multi-sport watch, meaning that you could use this for triathlons. When you are in a workout mode, it'll actually go from run to swim to bike without you having to do anything. So it will automatically detect those things. And that's one of the main features of the Vantage series that it does the multi-sport mode. So you might be thinking, what's the difference between this Vantage M and Vantage V? Well, the big thing is the price tag. So this Vantage M costs you $279 on the website. And then the Vantage V series is gonna cost you $459. So this Vantage M does have a lot of features that the Vantage V has, but you're missing out on some of the features like a barometer or a power meter on it. But uh, we'll talk about this watch today. All right, so let's take a look at the Polar Vantage M. As you can see right here, it is a nice looking watch. I think that it's a good looking watch that you could wear casually or you can wear out and about whenever you are working or out socially. The white one does stand out a little bit, but definitely if you get the black version, it'll work a lot better with a lot of different outfits. So let's take a look at the watch right here. So this is a 46 millimeter bezel right here that is uh, stainless steel. The other parts that are stainless steel is going to be the buttons over here. So these are all stainless steel buttons. And then lastly, the watch clasp right here is gonna be stainless steel also. So if you look at the screen, the screen is a nice big screen. This is a, like I said, this is a 45 millimeter watch. The screen size actually starts from here to here because it does have this little border, this little black border over here. So the screen size is only 1.2 inches. It's a 240 by 240 resolution screen. This display is not always on display. So that's a good thing about this one. It has two backlights. It has the initial backlight, which is gonna be, let me see if I can turn off the light so you can see actually. This is the backlight that you have whenever you're using it and if you want something brighter you'll have to press this upper left button right here so that greatly improves the backlight and readability of the watch. All right, so let's turn on the light back on. All right, so then if you look at the sides, it will have those five buttons. It has two buttons on the left side and then three buttons on the right side with a red little button in the middle. So basically this upper left button is for that backlight, like I said, and it'll also lock the watch. And then this bottom one is to start your workouts and to get to your settings menu. So basically you'll see all that fun stuff. And then the ones on the right are gonna be your directional buttons. The upper right is gonna be up, lower right is gonna be down, and the middle one is gonna be your select button. You can also start your workout by holding it down and you can start your workout by doing that. So then if you take a look at the back of the watch, this is where the heart rate monitor is. It does protrude out a little bit right here, but whenever it is on my wrist, I haven't had any issues with it feeling uncomfortable or whatever. It does leave a little imprint on your wrist along with the bubbles over here. So this will also leave a nice little imprint. You can actually kind of see it on my on my hand right here, you can see that it has some bumps from the watch band. So speaking of the watch band, the watch band is a silicone watch band. It's been comfortable for me. I, I, haven't, I haven't had any issues with it. There is the watch clasp. It's not your normal one. It's kind of weird and takes a little bit getting used to it because if you see right there, it's like a teeter-totter, a seesaw kind of thing. So when you put it on, you have to put it on uh, there first. You put it on like that first and then slip it in through here, which isn't a big thing, but I prefer the normal clasp and that's what they did for the Vantage V. But this clasp isn't the worst thing. So I will talk about this white watch band. I did think initially that it would get dirty. I know you can get different colors. Black is my preference, but they did send me the white variant of this watch. Uh, and you know, if you wash your hands like you're supposed to 20 seconds and wash your watch and your wrist, it gets clean. It hasn't really held on to a bunch of dirt, but it did get a little bit of dirt right here. So the band has held up pretty well and repelled dirt. One more thing about the bezel right here. I have used this working around uh, my truck, my lawnmower, doing a lot of different activities. And uh, you know, it has a few scratches. If you can see, it has a few scratches, nothing real horrible. The glass that the display is made out of is a hard coated PMMA laminated lens. 
So basically it's their dragon glass kind of thing that, they, that they're using. And you can see that there is no real scratches on here. I haven't been necessarily trying to protect it, but definitely for sure I will get a screen protector for it. I'm just gonna have to order that off of Amazon. So definitely you get all the different little screens here. So if you look at the first screen, the first screen is going to be the main screen where it just has the time, the polar logo, and then the date. And then you go to the next screen. This is going to be your activity screen. We'll give you all that fitness tracking data that you love. So basically it'll tell you your steps right here. And then it'll tell you how much time you've been active. If we go to the next screen, that's going to be your cardio status screen, which will basically tell you if you're detraining, maintaining, being productive or being overreaching. So kind of a good little metric to see just how much you are working out. And this depends on a lot of factor. Like after each workout, it'll ask you how this workout was. You'll give a little smiley face or a sad face and also your sleep too. You'll do the same thing with that. Uh, so it takes that into account and tells you if you are overtraining or whatnot. And then you go to the next screen. This screen is the heart rate screen right here. So if you click on the right button, uh, it'll tell you my heart rate for the day so far. My lowest heart rate is 42. The next screen is going to be your training session. So you can see basically the history of your different training sessions. I think it tracks the last seven workouts on here. So you can see what all you did. So right here, you can see my information that I ran 4.6 miles, all that fun stuff. And then we go to the next screen is going to be the sleep screen. This does track your sleep. I do have sleep apnea, so I sleep horribly. And uh, for me, uh, it's it's a cool metric to have, uh, but I'm not gonna base my day off it or my sleep with it. They do say on the website that this is not a medically accurate test. So uh, even though it does have cool metrics, it's not something that I use a lot. But let's just check out how I slept last night. So right here, it has the autonomic nervous system and it also measures your sleep change. So right here, it says that I didn't sleep well last night. As you can see, uh, if we open the details right here, it says I slept a lot more. Uh, right there, you can see I woke up at 5, 10 a.m. They do use that on your watch to measure your training and they'll tell you if you're over training or under training. And they also use that for their Fit Spark activities, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. All right, so let's take a look at the next screen. All right, so this is Fitzpark right here. It's basically a personal trainer on your wrist. It takes account of your sleep. It takes account of your running and how well you thought you did or what you perceived it was. It takes into account your heart rate, all that fun stuff, and gives you a workout of the day that you should do based on your training and your sleep. So right here is telling me that I need to build some muscle, right? So uh, yeah, I could believe that because I haven't been working out for a long time, I haven't gone to the gym since this pandemic started, so I definitely do need to build some muscle. So let's take a look at the workout that it chose for me. It wants me to do a regular, a circuit regular. So if we look at that, it'll actually give you a 33 minute workout. It tells you I should do for 40 seconds and then rest for one minute. And it also gives you little stick figures and it'll tell you exactly how to do the workout. So right here, if you don't know how to do a push up. That's how you do a push up. Next one is the box jump or, about, or the box step up. And you can see the little man doing a little box step up. To tell you the truth, I haven't really used this. Uh, I probably should. I, I think one day I will, but uh, that's definitely a cool feature that other watches don't have. They don't take account all your training and make a workout for you. And you know what? If you don't want to do like a strength training workout, you could choose something else. See? So if you go to, if you go further down, it'll give you a cardio interval workout that I should do or a cardio medium workout that I should do for the day. So that is very cool. All right, so that is all the screens on this watch. And you know what, this watch is mainly a fitness watch. This is like 95% a fitness watch and 5% a smartwatch because it does have smartwatch notifications, but uh, they're not the greatest to be honest. Like whenever you get a notification, it'll buzz. And like right now I have a notification right here and it's that little red bouncy circle right here. And the only way for me to access it is to actually click on that and then go down and go to my notifications Go to my notifications and then click the button over here and then i i will see all the fun notifications that i have and you know what some notifications shows up on my watch face but a lot of them don't and then i'll have to do that process to get my notifications which uh is annoying so generally i turn it off and also your watch will alert you of every little notification on your watch like for instance if you go watch a youtube video it'll notify you're watching a youtube video it will tell you if you have upcoming alarms it'll buzz for all your emails it'll buzz for all your updates 
it'll buzz for everything. And like I said, it's not the easiest thing to check out. You definitely want to go onto your app and take away privileges for those notifications if you do use the notifications. But for me, I turn off all notifications on my watch because I just find it annoying. And I really don't want to be distracted by these notifications during the day. If I want to see my notifications, I'll definitely just go on my phone for that. But for notifications and smartwatch features, this watch is not very good, to be honest. All right, so let's talk about the running features because I am a runner. I found that when I used it during my runs, the runs were accurate. It was equal to the Garmin. The heart rate, for me, I used it a lot during steady state training, so I used it for the lower heart rates. And whenever I was working out, I do have a Polar H9, which is a chest heart rate monitor. It is pretty much the same as the chest heart rate monitor. So uh, the way that I do wear it is you have to wear it underneath this wrist bone. So you basically have to wear it right here because optical heart rate monitors, like the one that the Polar Vantage M has, it needs a meaty part of your body. So if you put it over here, it's gonna read it better as opposed if you put it lower down on your wrist, uh, it's not gonna be as great because there's a lot more bony structures over here. It needs a little bit of fat. So I definitely got that covered. So this watch does depend a lot on the app. You can't change a lot of things on your watch if you don't have the apps. So one of the things that you can check out are the sports profiles. So for me, I only put running because that's the only one that I'm worried about, but it has more than 120 or 130 different sports profiles. You can see right here, it has everything trotting. I don't even know what that is. It has soccer, skiing, road running, riding, orienteering, mountain biking. So basically the way that it tracks that is by measuring your heart rate and it estimates the calorie expenditure from those workouts. And that's how it does it for the, all the other workouts. The main thing that it does track well is running. So let's just take a look at the running screens that it has. All right, so right here I have my running screen. So just to start your run, all you have to do is pull this button down right here and then you can start your run. And you can definitely select different sports, but I only have running on here. So if you press that side button, the recording will be started. And then you can see all your fun stats. You can see your distance, your pace, your duration. Uh, this one is your altitude. This measures it by GPS. If you have the Polar Vantage V, it has an internal barometer. Uh, this one is gonna be your heart rate. The cool thing about this one is that if you are training by heart rate, it'll tell you what zone you're in. So uh, say if I only wanted to train in zone one, once I get into that zone, all I would have to do is press this button on the right, hold it down, and it zone locks. It will alert you if you are falling below the zone or above the zone, uh, which is good, which is good, but definitely it can get annoying because this thing buzzes every maybe three or four seconds. So if you are out of your zone, your watch will be buzzing like crazy and it actually kind of stresses me out. It's harder for you to get down to the zone that you want to be in. So I wish that they would uh, at least make the distance of the alerts a little bit further or let you customize it. But for right now, it, it alerts you every three to four seconds, which uh, basically your wrist will be having a fun little vibration massage whenever you're running, if you are out of your zone. So yeah, basically that's it. And like I said, uh, the running metrics are fine. I haven't had any issues with it being a lot different from what my Garmin says. All right, so the battery life of this watch is pretty good. For me, it lasts about five to six days. That's with me running just about every day. So great battery life for GPS mode. If you wanna run with it and you're running an ultra, this will last you 30 hours. And this is one of the main features that I think you would get this watch compared to the Polar Ignite, which has a lot of the same features as this one, but this one will last 30 hours. So it's great for ultra marathons that can do a uh, 100 miler under 30 hours. If you want longer battery life, you'll have to look to the Grit or the Polar Vantage V. All right, so that's all I have to say about the watch. Let's talk about the pros I have about this watch. So the pros are that it is a good looking watch. It is a large watch face. I like the way that it looks on my wrist. So I definitely like the look of this watch. Another thing that it does well is the training. I think that the heart rate monitor is good. The GPS is fine. All that is good. I like the FitSpark feature that it has. That is your personal trainer on your wrist that gives you a different little exercise that you can do every day depending on your sleep and your previous workouts. So that's a cool feature. I definitely love the battery life. The battery life of this watch is great. I charge it once a week and then if I want to do an ultra marathon, I can get 30 hours out of it. So that's another plus for me. Another thing that I like about the Polar watches is actually that Polar Flow that they have. Polar Flow is like the Garmin Connect. So Polar Flow is 
is what you use on your app and also on desktop. It's a great little feature. It took a little bit of time to get used to and when I first used it, I didn't like it whatsoever. But after getting to know it a little bit better, I really like the Polar Flow system. It's worked great for me. So if you guys are tired of Garmin, think that Garmin is a little old school, Polar Flow will definitely be a nice little change up for you. All right, so let's talk about cons. The cons is gonna have to deal with the backlight. It has that initial backlight and then the the uh, higher backlight and it turns on automatically sometimes and I've noticed that most polar watches has a little bit of lag whenever you turn your wrist I work out a lot in the morning so what I have to do is turn on the always on backlight during my workouts which will drain my batteries and I wish I didn't have to do that I wish that just simply turning my wrist would automatically turn on that backlight whenever I'm working out but it doesn't and I wish that it lasted longer because that backlight only lasts maybe four seconds and uh, whenever you turn your wrist that's not a long time and then you have to wait again for it to reset and then turn your wrist so it's not the best user experience flipping your wrist all the time to look at your watch but like I said you can turn it always on during a workout you can't do that if it's not in a workout so I wish they let you customize a lot of the settings on there like the backlight and also the vibration I mean the vibrations are crazy like I said when I'm running and training by heart rate if I'm out of my zone your wrist will vibrate like crazy and and you will get super annoyed i wish they would let you customize that vibration on your wrist where it's, it's not so often like it's every three to four seconds so literally your wrist is vibrating the whole time if you're out of your zone for instance my garmin watch will alert me once i'm out of my zone and then alert me when i'm back in the zone so it's not gonna go crazy on me trying to stress me out trying to get me in the zone so i wish that you could customize it where it could be similar to what the garmin has and then lastly those smartphones notifications those smartphone notifications aren't the greatest it's not the greatest user experience when trying to look at your notifications because like I said sometimes it'll show on your watch face whenever you get a notification and sometimes it won't and also all the notifications that it sends you it sends you just way too many notifications on your wrist and you can't really check it until you access it in with your watch all right so in final let's talk about who is this watch for this watch is for runners or triathletes that want to track their workouts and not have to worry about notifications or whatever this thing will do a great job in tracking your workouts and is definitely more of a fitness watch than it is a smart watch but overall i think that this watch is good it does have some of those annoying cons that i listed but they're not too annoying where I wouldn't want to use this watch full time. I could definitely see myself using this watch moving forward. It doesn't have a lot of the features that Garmin has like music or pay with your watch or find my phone, all those fun things. It'll definitely just track your workouts and it does a great job of doing that. And especially at the price point of $279, I think this is gonna be the watch that I would wanna buy if I were gonna buy a Polar watch because of that battery life. The 30 hours battery life is gonna be the main feature that I really want this watch for. I want a watch that I don't have the charge every day and a watch that will last me through an ultra marathon and this is watch will definitely do that so in final this watch does get a goku runner thumbs up from me because of that battery life and because it tracks all the running metrics that i need and that's all that really matters to me as a runner and when i'm looking for a fitness watch all right guys hope you guys enjoyed this review if you guys did give me a like subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys next time peace